Hello everyone and welcome to my unboxing of the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red. Now while I remove it from the uh, padded envelope, let's just recap AudioQuest Dr uh, Dragonfly's history. So back in 2012, AudioQuest released the first um, Dragonfly USB deck. They, they then released another one later in uh, 2014 so two years um, after the first one um, and the second one was called the Dragonfly version 1.2 now the first Dragonfly version was sold for about 210 quid in the UK and the second one which is version 1.2 was then sold for about um, 160 to 170 quid so within two years AudioQuest had reduce the cost of um, the Dragonfly um, and they've also made some technical improvements that made version 1.2 sound a bit better than the original version. Now um, unfortunately for iOS users and uh, arguably um, other Android mobile users as well, the uh, uh, both of the, the, the first versions, the version um, the first version and version 1.2 consumed uh, quite a high amount of current which meant that it was not possible to plug them in directly to um, an iOS device without uh, first connecting it through a powered USB hub um, and uh, similarly for Android users it, it would drain their battery uh, too quickly now here we are in 2016 and AudioQuest has just released the Dragonfly Red and the Dragonfly Black. Now both of the the new models can be connected directly to to an iOS device such as an iPhone using one of these official Apple line to USB camera adapter or uh, you, by using uh, one of their products called uh, I think it's called a Dragon Tail that basically converts USB to um, micro USB for Android users. Now there are a number of differences between the new Dragonfly black and red models and the two previous models, the original and the 1.2. So the first being AudioQuest has replaced the USB host controller chip in, in the Dragonfly units. So they were originally using uh, what is it, a Texas instrument TAS 1020B chip in the original version and the version 1.2 so that was its Achilles heel because it consumed uh, too much power so with um, the, the, the new black and red they, they have switched to a, a new uh, provider um, they switched to a new chip made by Arizona microchip technology and uh, the model of the new chip is the uh, MX270 which is a 32-bit chip and this chip is about, if I remember correctly, about 77% uh, more power efficient than um, its predecessor which is why this, uh, this new model works directly with um, iOS devices and also uh, they are, that's just the start of it there are, they are many other technical improvements that make this, uh, these two versions sound a whole lot better than the previous version so um, uh, without going into too much technical detail, um, there are a couple of things that that uh, I should point out. Um, right, so the original Dragonfly version and uh, version 1.2 had a, a headphone output of uh, 1.8 volts, which allowed it to drive um, quite a decent sized headphones. Um, the new uh, Dragonfly Black. Um, has had that reduced to 1.2 volts so it's not as capable as it, uh, of driving large headphones as the original ones were but here we've got the Dragonfly Red which has a higher output voltage of 2.1 volts so this unit is actually well it's 77% more power efficient than the original models it's got the highest um, headphone power output which should allow it to drive almost any headphone on the market 
um, there is another difference, ma another major difference between the dragonfly red and all three previous, uh, all, all, rather I should say all three other versions of the dragonfly, including the dragonfly black, and that is the dragonfly red has a digital volume control built in, so it's basically got a 64-bit DAC that um, changes the uh, a signal output to match the volume setting that the user selects. Whereas on all the other three models, it, uh, they had um, an analog volume control built in. Now all all uh, all four Dragonfly uh, decks are uh, volume controlled by proxy, meaning when the user uh, selects the output volume on on their device or their computers. Um, the um, mechanism in the the unit will uh, vary the output accordingly. In this case, uh, with the Dragonfly rate, it will be done digitally by the DAC. So the output is direct, it's bit perfect, um, there's no distortion or uh, what do you call it, or uh, clipping or trimming that will be uh, audible as a result of uh, lowering or increasing the volumes. So let's go ahead and remove this unit from the box. Okay, this is what comes out. There's a tray with some uh, promotional articles like this one from HD Tracks. And there is a, a warranty card that needs to be posted back to the United States or you could register your unit online by going to the URL that's provided there. There is also a manual that is multilingual as you've seen on the box. All the instructions are multilingual as well and you basically open this up for the same information in other languages. Oops, sorry for inserting this short video snippet abruptly here. While I was packing everything up, I just noticed that there was also another product card in the box which is from Rune which uh, sounds like an online music streaming service uh, to me. and. What this is, is a, is a trial membership that's provided complimentary for a 60-day uh, subscription to the Rune service. Now I'm not sure what, well this is, it does say that it's compatible with Mac and Windows and iOS and Android devices. Now I'm not sure what uh, the fidelity level of the uh, tracks on this service are available at, but as far as I I know there are only two streaming services, which are Qbus and Tidal, that uh, actually provide lossless uh, music streaming on the internet. So uh, here uh, we do got check them out. A leather carrying case, which is the same one that uh, has come with all Dragonfly models, and this is basically the unit itself. Now this is, uh, I was surprised that this is actually quite solid metal. I mean, I've not owned or even touched any of the other uh, Dragonfly models. So this is my first one. But um, it's uh, very well constructed. It's very good quality. In fact, one thing I should point out is the 3.5 millimeter jack is quite tight so it gives a, a very good uh, grip and uh, uh, subsequently very good contact against the uh, earphone or, or headphone jack. Now this cap is also a bit too tight for my liking because it's not possible to open it with one hand and if, if at the moment I've left a slight gap here so that I can use my fingernails to grip the uh, cap and pull it off but if it was fully pushed in it's actually um, 
I found it a struggle getting it off because of the uh, of how tight it, it actually is so once you get it off um, get that gold plated uh, USB connector and that's basically it so to use it with my iPhone I've got this uh, Apple Lightning to USB camera adapter and this is what it is um, it probably needs no introduction so this is what AudioQuest says is required so I bought one of these um, if you have iOS um, 9.2 and above you can actually use one of these to um, to connect other accessories to your phone such as USB memory sticks and things like that but if your version of iOS is, uh, uh, predates 9.2 then um, you can only use this to um, do the same with memory sticks and all that with iPads but not on iPhones however with the, uh, the Dragonfly um, it will work on iPhones as well as iPad um, regardless of what your iOS version is um, so so yeah if you get one of these um, yep do upgrade your iOS to at least 9.2 so you can use this not just for Dragonfly but for other uh, peripherals as well um, and, and that of, of course just uh, that only applies to the iPhone you know, with the iPad you can yeah use um, any version of iOS uh, with that and you can do everything um, also uh, just to uh, uh, before we move on to um, to this jitter bar I just want to point out that this is actually the older model of this product which is MD let's just focus uh, MDZ oops I'm so sorry about this MDZ sorry MD8 21ZMA which is the older version of this there's a newer version in the United States but it's not um, available here it, it's very new and it hasn't trickled its way out to the rest of the world yet now if you look at the product description on Apple's website it actually says that um, with this one it says that it's only compatible with iPads but the, the newer model is compatible with iPhones as well as iPads so I would say just ignore whatever is written on Apple's website because this definitely works with iPhones as well so don't worry about uh, what is said there and so moving on here's the, the USB jitterbug by AudioQuest which I've unboxed in another video and this basically just to reiterate filters out noises especially electrical noise from the host system that prevents it from reaching the dragonfly um, and with this you, you, you wouldn't get uh, noise from electrical components such as spinning hard drive motors and things like that uh, interfering with the analog sound output on the dragonfly so I have both of these connected in my uh, setup and that would then connect to this camera connection kit or rather lightning to USB camera adapter as it's now called and there we go that's what I've got. 